Good afternoon uh, for everybody. Uh, it is a pleasure to announce this, uh, to introduce this online session on our book series presentation as part of the celebration of our 20th anniversary, of Emmet's 20th anniversary. Uh, this is one of other initiatives we are going to have to celebrate this anniversary. We will be organizing a series of book presentations in order to showcase the diversity of our publications in terms of subjects, theoretical and empirical frameworks, contexts, and scholars, which uh, very much portrays what is now the community of MS. These book series will be structured in three lines. One will be revisiting the exam books, Another will be highlighting dissertations and publications of early career researchers, and others will be on specific themes which are relevant for the future of the SE field. So we gathered prominent researchers to present and discuss these works. Today we begin the series with the presentation of one of the exam books on social enterprise in Latin America. And in the following months, each month, we'll have one online presentation. So please stay tuned to MS webpage for the updates on these uh, series, on these presentations. Uh, as I said today, we'll have the book on social enterprise in Latin America, which will be presented by Fernanda van der Ley and discussed by Mart Nissen and Luis Inacio Geiger. The three are the organizers of the book, which is an output of the research project XM, International Comparative Social Enterprise Models, coordinated by Jacques de Fourny and Marc Nissen. The book is now in open access. You can access to it in the uh, publisher page in uh, route launch. Uh, regarding the participants, I will briefly introduce them for someone who don't know them, which will be difficult. Fernanda van der Leyen obtained her PhD in sociology from Columbia University in the city of New York. She is the director of the Institute of Socioeconomic Research of the Bolivian Catholic University, San Pablo. Luis Inácio Geiger is full professor at Universidade do Val dos Rio dos Sinos, Unicinos, Brazil. He holds a master in science and a PhD in sociology from the Catholic University of Louvain. Mart Nissen is full professor at the School of Economics of the Catholic University of Louvain and a member of the Interdisciplinary Research Center on Work, State and Society in the Catholic University of Louvain. Our session today will last 16 minutes, uh, 60 minutes, I'm sorry, meaning that we will be finishing at seven Central European time. After Fernanda presentation and the comments from Luis Inácio and Mart, we reserved some time for questions and answers and for discussion for the participants here. The session is being recorded and it will be published in MS YouTube channel Therefore, if any of the participants attending this session don't want to appear, uh, their voice or their faces in the video, they should keep their camera and their microphone off. So thank you so much for participating and for attending this session. Uh, looking forward for the uh, stimulating thoughts and debates, I give the floor to Fernanda. Hi, everybody. For me, it is a pleasure and an honor to be here presenting our book uh, that is now open access. And I will share a presentation. Let's do it. All right. OK, so here, here is our book, Social Enterprise in Latin America theory, models, and practice. This book was edited by Luis Inácio Geiger, Marta Nissen, and myself, Fernanda Wanderley. Um, it's important to begin mentioning that the book presents the results of the International Comparative Social Enterprise Models, ICSAM, project for Latin America. In this book, seven countries participated. Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru. As we can see in the book, uh, in Latin America, we have a variety of concepts and terms 
related to the diversity of non-conventional economic organizations. Uh, we have some concepts as informal economy, popular economy, solidarity economy, labor economy, community economy, social economy, and less, less, uh, least used uh, are social enterprise and social entrepreneurship. In this project, uh, we decided to have the concept of social enterprise as, as the general term to encompass, encompass the wide spectrum of organizations and initiatives that combine an entrepreneurial dynamics to provide services and goods with the primacy of their social ends. So the, 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 all the studies presenting in this, presented in this book followed the EMIS approach, which is based on three subsets of indicators. The first subset is the economic and entrepreneurial di dimensions of social enterprise. A second is the social dimension of social enterprise. And a third, the governance related dimension of social enterprise. It is important to notice that these indicators are not prescriptive criteria. Instead, it is proposed as an ideal type, as a tool, to locate the position of the observed entities relative to one another and to identify subset of social enterprises. It's also important to mention that even though these indicators are focused on the internal governance of social enterprises, the MS approach articulates the social economic and political goals of these organizations and therefore they, their embeddedness in society. So all the studies that we present follow this approach. The book has two main parts. The first one, is a, the national overviews of social enterprise. We have a chapter on the, the Argentinian uh, case by Gonzalo Vasquez, another on Bolivian case by me, a Brazilian chapter by Adriani Ferrarini, Luiz Inácio Geiger, Marília Ver Verissimo Barones, and Paulo Cruz Filho. Another chapter on the Chilean experience by Michela Giovannini, Pablo Nasha Calderon, Sebastian Gatica. A fifth chapter on popular and solidarity economy in Ecuador by Maria Jose Ruiz Rivera and Andrea Lemetri. Another one in Mexico by Sergio Paramo Ortiz. And two, and another on Mexico, a second one on Mexico by Carola Conde Bonfim and Leila Oliat. And finally, we have in this part one of the book, an, uh, a chapter on Peru by Maria Angela Priale and Susi Caballero. As you can see by the titles, we have different definitions, as I was telling. Social and solidarity economy, uh, Bolivian cooperative and community enterprises, social enterprises, popular and solidarity economy. So as we can see, we have different uh, concepts and terms referring for, to the same phenomenon. 
what we see in each chapter of this part one is a universe of diverse economic organizations and dynamics. For example, in Argentina, Gonzalo Velasquez proposes five main models, self-managed organizations, entity of the traditional social economy, cooperatives for social inclusion related to state policies, social business led by social entrepreneurs, associative and family popular initiatives. In the chapter on Chile, the authors analyze two different emerging trends, new cooperative and big corps. In the case of Peru, we have four models, nonprofit SE, the social cooperative, the social business, and the nonprofit slash social business partnership. And as I have already said, in the case of Bolivia, we have we analyze peasant economic organizations, community economic organizations, artisans associations, and cooperatives. What we can see is that the chapters shows how these organizations are embedded, are shaped and fight to shape national institutional context and ecosystems. In general, we see that this economic diversity is not sufficiently recognized and incorporated in the national institutional frameworks. And they lack public policy to improve its performance. The second part of the book, we have three chapters uh, oriented to compare and, and to analyze the perspectives across Latin American countries. We have a chapter on social enterprise in Latin America, patterns and historical relevance, another chapter on social enterprise as attention field by Jean-Louis Laville, Genalto Carvalho de França Filho, Philippe Einaud, and Luciana Lucas dos Santos. And to close the book, we have the chapter on Latin American social enterprise models in a worldwide perspective by Jacques de Fourny, Marc Nissens, and Oliver Broly. Uh, in these last chapters, we have First, the 9 and 11 propose supranational SE partner, patterns and models. We have the chapter 10 opens up new questions from a critical perspective. And what we have is a book that not only offers a state of the art on social enterprise or social and solidarity economy in Latin America, but also suggests important topics for future research. What we was, were asked, uh, the, the country's contribution had, all, all chapter had, had, have three goals. First, they try to understand concept and context related to SE phenomenon and landscape. They also map SE models in national contexts, and they develop an analysis of the institutional trajectories, legal frameworks, public policies, and programs. So I invite everyone to read this book. Thank you so much, Fernanda. <laughs> I will now pass the floor to Luiz Inácio to comment. Okay, let's go. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Fernanda and the others. I will try to, to present some specific points or contributions uh, from the book as to complement the presentation, the overview 
uh, presented by Fernanda. Uh, but let me say first that uh, taking part in this panel is, of course, a great pleasure for me. Thanks for that. Uh, as you know, the Exxon books represent a culmination of a multi-year work carried out by many hands and conducted with mastery by Martin Essens and Jacques de Fourny. So let me congratulate both on this and thank all the people who took part in the Exxon research project, as well as the IMES staff, whose professional and attentive support has been decisive many times. In fact, all the time. So just a few short comments. First, the main question of the research project. It was very challenging. In each country under study, were there or still are there organizations whose objectives and activities have an economic and entrepreneurial dimension, a social dimension, and a governance-related dimension, each one corresponding to some extent to a set of indicators presented by Fernanda that distinguish these organizations from the public economy and the private for-profit economy regardless of the name they receive and of their historical pets, are there, were there, and are there such organizations? The answer was, and I think that it still is, yes, many. All of them embedded in their respective social context, several of them with deep roots and long trajectories, most of them being protagonists of a conflicting history, a history of development, but also and mainly of exploitation and oppression, but also of resistance, creativity, and many times hope. As for the term social enterprise itself, as a whole, it's not used by social actors in Latin America, as Fernanda uh, has um, pointed. It does not appear in the usual classification and does not figure in the legal frameworks with little exceptions. However, the concept, the ideal type concept of social enterprise functioning as a heuristic tool was proved useful to broaden the perspective of the researchers on the realities under study, to provide a basis for dialogue within and between the research teams and to highlight particularities of each country and of the continent comparing with other continents. Secondly, about the main patterns, patterns, as Fernanda van der Leyen explained uh, or suggested, through a comparison of national models and considering the meaning that the organizations have for the main protagonist as a primary criterion, then uh, we arrived at seven general patterns of social enterprises in Latin America. Amongst them, two patterns are predominant in the countries surveyed. The ethnic and community-based organizations and the self-managed class-related organizations. Both combine the three dimensions of the social enterprise concept in a fuller and more balanced way. In addition, in many cases, they evidence advanced practices of some indicators. For instance, its participatory governance achieves greater democratic radicalism through principles of self-management, their explicit aim to benefit the community, 
related to the social dimension is amplified and acquires a political dimension through social movements that seek more general or even global transformations in society. Even more, the collective character of these initiatives also embraces the economic dimensions and leads to forms of management based on social co-ownership or on workers' co-ownership. One of the major traits of these organizations is the fact that they run under the very control of their members who fulfill by themselves some of their needs and wills for such purpose, acting collectively. This is a feature of the two uh, social enterprise patterns I mentioned before, their trademark of otherness. In other words, in several countries surveyed, the corresponding organizations follow a cooperative standard, largely predominant. Basically, it means that the members of such organizations are involved both as associated or co-owners and users. Irrespective of their legal status, their dynamic depends mainly on the very members' participation, demanding a substantial self-management ability. The conclusion we came across is that by using the concept of social enterprise as a gateway, as a gateway, the research project led us to the universe of the popular, but also and mainly the social and solidarity economy in Latin America, in which most alternative organizations recognize themselves and operate. And what about the social mission of the social enterprise in Latin America? Taking the social and solidarity economy landscape into account makes it easier to understand why the social mission of these social enterprises, even implicit, can acquire great breadth and engender strategies of resistance, struggle and creations of economic alternatives that do not depend on or are not guided by the capitalist interest. By the way, the primacy of social aims, of the social aims should be interpreted after all as a quest of freedom from the currently prevailing economy, not embedded in anti-social in the Latin American context. This is not simply a matter that affects one social aim or purpose, amongst many others. It's about the reason to be of the social enterprises. Thus, a central driver in their theological perspective and wishful thinking. Therefore, naming the enterprise under analysis and stressing their mission as social should not be understood as less economic or nor less political. Indeed, in the Latin American, Latin American context, the adoption of the cooperative legal format generally comes from a wish to make viable a long-term economic project through an alternative way of producing goods or offering services in opposition to the dominant capitalist economy. This is, also, this is also a political choice aimed at addressing needs and giving response to human aspirations, sometimes enhancing collaborative relations between disadvantaged social actors at a micro level or developing macro level actions in reference to broader societal values. As a final comment, I would add that the national studies presented in the book have led us 
to a conclusion, social enterprises act and must be recognized as forces promoting an economy based on social ties. We came to this examining the position that the patterns of social enterprise assume before the economic principles or socioeconomic principles of the uh, Karl Polanyi, Polanyi's typology. Both retribution and reciprocity alongside domesticity are principles compatible with the existence of consistent and lasting social bonds. Contrary to the principle of exchange, the market principle, they institute socially embedded economies or might do it. From this point of view, what can be expected from the social enterprise in Latin America is that they promote economic plurality for combinations of different principles among which reciprocity may play a central role. Therefore, it comes up with a relevant question for our action and our future research. How and to what extent does the social enterprise field contribute not only to maintaining the economic plurality that is typical of our societies, but also to fostering new hybridism in which reciprocity plays a role of integration, instituting by that way other forms of economy, of social integration, and bringing for us, for everybody, a better life. This is not something only related to the Latin, Latin American context, for sure. Overall, or even everywhere, we might say, the reciprocity underlying socially oriented models of economy reaffirms the values of human solidarity and leads the way towards a new economic and intercultural democracy. Thank you so much for your attention. I give back the fourth, Sylvia. Thank you, Luis, on time. Macht, now it's your turn. Thank you. Yes. Hi, nice to see you, everybody. Um, I will come back to the last chapter, but first of all, I would like to, to share a feeling is that XM has been a wonderful adventure uh, across the, the world involving more than 200 researchers in more than 50 countries. And so what has been very, very nice is to, to discuss this uh, question of this organization or this enterprise driven by a social aim. Of course, the context of different countries are very different, but try to understand that this kind of enterprise do exist everywhere and to try to better understand their place and role in our societies. So I will, I will try to share my screen uh, and to see if you see my slides. So, so what do you see? We see them. We see yeah, them. Last. But I need to, it must be first full screen, which is not the case for the moment. Uh huh. -huh. Official just uh... yes, that's better. No, is that yes. isn't it? That's better. Okay, so I will come back to the result of the last chapter, explaining in a few minutes and words what's was the goal of this um, general project. One of the goal. The basic uh, intuition or hypothesis was that it was possible to um, explain or to observe different kinds of models in different countries. With that objective in mind, uh, we developed an analytical framework uh, in the form of a triangle based on two main concepts. First, the concept of interest which can be seen as the, main, as the main driver of each organization. Of course, we have the capital interest, 
We have also the general interest, which is at the core of the state, but also we have the mutual interest, which is the kind of um, interest you can see in cooperative. Cooperative, as explained by Luis Ignacio, are not uh, driven by the capital and interest, but the interest of the members. So the first concept of this triangle are these three kinds of interests. The second concept, which is key to understand the triangle, is the kind of resources mobilized by this organization. Some organizations are mainly embedded in the market, relying mainly on market income, and other do combine non-market and market uh, resources. This is in the middle, hybrid resources, and then you have dominant market resources. On this basis, and I don't have time to go into details, but from an analytical framework, we put on the table four kinds of models. The first, first, first model are entrepreneurial nonprofit, ENP. The second one, social cooperative. The third one coming from the state, what we called public social enterprise. And the fourth one, social businesses. So this was a kind of hypothesis at the core of the XM project. But the second step, which was very important, was of course to test the existence of this model. So the empirical part was of course very important. We had a lot of qualitative, um, qualitative studies and all the national chapter do explain the specific context of each country based on this qualitative data, uh, data coming from the enterprise, but also at the level of public policy. But we had also a more quantitative part of the project with the aim to test the existence of these four models in different countries. As explained by Fernanda, we didn't impose a very strict definition of social enterprise because we know that first, the concept of social enterprise is not used as such in every country. You could speak about solidarity economy, social economy, economy, community enterprise, social enterprise, whatever. And also that because we think based on the uh, scientific uh, evidence, that's impossible to have a unified definition of social enterprise. So it was very important to have a very a kind of loose, not definition, but approach of social enterprise, saying these are all the enterprise organizations driven by a social objective. And so we ask local research to collect data on this type of organization, whatever the label. And of course, we know that the concept of social enterprise in Latin America is not very popular. And what was important is, was to collect data on three types of dimension, the type of mission, the type of economic model, the type of resources, and the type of governance. Because the governance is also a key dimension. This is a little bit a trademark of the MS approach to understand the type of dynamic at the core of a social enterprise. So everybody went uh, in, its country, in her or his country, collecting data regarding th those three dimensions. And so we had a, a sample at the worldwide level and we performed a multiple factorial analysis followed by cluster analysis to see which kind of cluster was where coming from the data without imposing a, a definition regarding social enterprise. And at the uh, international level, seven clusters have been came, emerged from this data. And these seven clusters could be related to the different models put in the triangle. I don't have time to, to go uh, in depth in each uh, cluster, but the main message of this table was the following, or is the following. In almost all country, I think I didn't go back to the final result, but I think in uh, 40 country among the 45, it was possible, it was not possible, we observed the three models. 
the social business model, the social cooperative model, and what we call the entrepreneurial nonprofit model. As, as we had enough data for Latin America, it was possible to make the same analysis only at the level of Latin America. And so I will uh, take a few minutes to explain the result for Latin America. We had one, two, three, four clusters. The main, uh, the cluster which were uh, more important, as Luis Ignacio said, as those uh, enterprise or organization with a cooperative trademark. These are in the middle of the table. What we called solidarity based cooperative or association and a second cluster, cooperative microfinance social enterprise. So these two clusters could be very close to what we called at the international level as social cooperative. Even we don't speak, huh? we don't label this enterprise as social cooperative in Latin America. Why? Why do we, did we decide to, to put these two clusters close to the social cooperative model? First, in most of the case, not all of them, the legal form was cooperative. Some could be association. Second, the type of social mission of these uh, two clusters, the first one, uh, the main mission of this solidarity based cooperative uh, or association uh, is work integration, is generation of employment. And also with a goal, which is very important, the question of or the, yes, the, the, the question of empowerment of, the, of, of these people. The second cluster, the main, the main uh, mission is uh, access to finance. If we look at the type of resources, mainly these are uh, market income, even if reciprocity resources are also important. And what's very important regarding governance, and Luis Ignacio said that, that we can characterize these two clusters as democratic governance, but where the beneficiaries are the members. So most of these organization are labor managed. So these are for sure the two type of cluster which are the most important at the level of social America. If you go on the uh, right hand side of the table, we observed also a cluster we named health and social services entrepreneurial nonprofit, which are very close to the entrepreneurial nonprofit model, which was in the triangle. In this case, the most frequent legal form is either nonprofit organization, nonprofit organization or foundation. The main social mission is access to health and social services with the aim to tackle social exclusion. Economic resources are much more hybrid. And it was a surprise to see that less of 30% of this, the income is coming from the market. And this could be qualified as social enterprise. It was not a definition. So it was a surprise to see that this type of organization was in the basket of the social enterprises. And a big difference with the previous cluster is that yes, the government is still democratic, but the beneficiaries are not the members. And of course, this is a big difference with the previous, cl previous clusters. Uh, the members are a person from the civil society, but not the beneficiaries, uh, which are the target of the organization and not the members of the organization. And then the last cluster, which is small in uh, Latin, Latin America, but it can be observed, is very close to what we call the social business models. But these are very different kind of organization, very small company, most of them are commercial company or informal. The type of social mission are very diverse. As cooperative, they are mainly embedded of the market, but the type of governance is very different. These are small organization with one or two person as the lead of the organization. So we called the type of governance as independent, 
because it's not the image of this big company, you know, big uh, capitalist company trying to develop some kind of social aim. These are very small organization with a few person uh, which are the lead, who, excuse me, who are the leaders of the organization. So the main message of this table is the following. As in other parts of the world, we could observe different models. And some models are close to the social business model. Some are close to what we call at the international level social cooperative model. And some are close to the entrepreneurial nonprofit model. But of course, when you go into the details of this cluster, you see some specificity to the Latin American uh, context. And as uh, Luis Ignacio said, for sure, the middle of the table is the dominant pattern in Latin America, uh, which can be uh, labeled as solidarity based uh, cooperative or association. That's enough. Okay, thank you so much, Mart. We now have uh, 15 minutes to uh, discuss, post questions. Uh, I don't know if you have questions to each other or if uh, the other participants have questions. I have one. <laughs> um, I have one too. Okay, so you first, please. Um, a very, very interesting, uh, the results. And I, I am wondering how much this landscape has changed uh, with, pan with the pandemia. Uh, in Bolivia, we saw change, important changes, mainly on market circuits for food and some other um, organizations. So I was wondering uh, how much that has changed with the pandemic, not only in Latin America, but in other countries, and if it would be a good idea to follow up and uh, thinking about a new project of, uh, of diagnosing uh, the situation in 2023. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have an idea or an experience of the impact in terms of the uh, uh, I can the say, of course, no, maybe, no, no, but I don't know the evolution of Latin America. I, I can speak about the level of uh, Belgium, but not uh, Latin America. So, I will uh, leave the floor to uh, Luis Ignacio or Fernanda, who, of course, uh, are close to, to, to this field, which I, 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 which I'm not. Would be interesting to see the changes in e Europe too. I think that the comparative perspective is very, very important. At least, I mean, good idea to follow with a new uh, research project. <laughs> so I will just share some intuition I see uh, in Belgium. Um, I would say the following. I think with the pandemia, during the pandemia, uh, some uh, sectors have been very active. For example, short uh, uh, food uh, circuit. Uh, we saw a lot of people going to this uh, cooperative and so it's a kind of a boom. Uh, and uh, when we came out from this pandemic, uh, all this positive trend uh, went uh, down. Uh, and this has been very disappointing for, for some people because uh, there was some hope uh, saying, yes, uh, people uh, uh, understand what's going on. And, uh, you know, uh, with the pandemic, it's just a new dynamic uh, for this cooperative and association and there are more clients and that's good news. But of course, uh, not of course, but I mean, it's a pity to see that the history uh, wasn't uh, 
uh, not this history. Uh, after the pandemic, we, we saw people coming back to the you know, uh, usual habits, going to the supermarket and all those kind of things. But at the same time, I would say, uh, if you look at the uh, trend, I see the development of new, uh, new type of cooperative uh, in mobility, in energy, and I see the consolidation and even the, the growing of some models. So, you know, you have these two kind of dynamic. Huh? This, uh, yes, or this boom with the pandemic was just, uh, you know, uh, uh, a temporal, uh, temporary boom. But at the same time, I see the consolidation of some models uh, in mobility, energy, even food. Uh, with the development of uh, yes of, of cooperative, so I, I see a, a, I, I don't know a, a history in uh, how do you say that uh, in with two colors you know uh, black and white uh, and so I think uh, we need uh, to to continue to to try to understand why some models are uh, seems to be uh, much more solid and other are just disappearing. Can I make my question? <laughs> uh, I'm wondering um, how uh, are the reactions, both in terms of the other scholars, the academia, the practitioners, the organizations, and the policymakers of uh, this uh, uh, encompassing term, social enterprise, for thing for uh, organizations which are usually very different and which usually uh, don't see themselves uh, close to each other. I mean, for instance, to include in the same umbrella solidarity economy uh, uh, initiatives, cooperatives and informal initiatives with the social businesses, uh, or to include also the nonprofit organizations. Uh, how is this uh, uh, working in the uh, Latin America countries? Do you have any idea of the kind of you know feedbacks that you had from the researchers policymakers and the practitioners about the concept of social enterprise is it do they see it useful or maybe i can begin um in bolivia they govern govern uh, uh, we have a new law about social enterprise and the meaning of social enterprise is very narrow now everybody relates social enterprise with this meaning uh -huh. so that is a problem with the con uh, an additional problem because it was not very popular so now we have a problem because when we say social enterprise, everybody thinks about a specific model for the government. Okay. Yes, uh, you have discussed this between uh, within the, the teams of the research project in Latin America. It's true, social enterprise uh, um, is not a, a word commonly used and understood, uh, at least uh, in the same ways uh, it is in many European countries. But once explained the, the status of this uh, concept, the ideal type, statue, and functions of the concept. Uh, once well explained, people uh, agree with the interest of using uh, a category of analysis, which has allowed us to understand the Latin America context in terms of this kind of initiatives in a global uh, perspective. Uh, it's, uh, it's something we cannot avoid. Uh, yes, uh, I, I mean, uh, 
to employ a semantic that could be, be meaningful for many people or all the people in, involved in a, in a global project. Uh, anyway, uh, in, a, in a paper we have published, myself and Fernando, we have published uh, a version of the, one of the chapters of the book in a very important uh, Latin American journal from Chile. And we change the semantic. We talk much more about uh, alternative forms of organization, socioeconomic organizations, uh, leaving the explaining, of course, uh, the use of uh, social enterprise concept in the research, but trying to avoid uh, a feeling of uh, strangeness. Can I say this? Strangeness or uh, distance, uh, non comprehension uh, regarding the the main concept used in the in the in the research project. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, semantics, categories, concepts is many times a mess in social science. Huh? It's worth to, to debate, to try to come to uh, consensus sometimes, but uh, it's something uh, that will never end. The debate in terms of concept, methodologies, uh, and so on. So uh, okay. the important thing was to, to understand uh, the initiatives in this continent in regard to initiatives similar or quite similar initiatives all over the world. It was the, the test, the objective mm -hmm. uh, in, my, in my, my point of view. Okay. I invite the other participants here to pose a question, make a comment. Linda, Carlos, Dina, Sophie, Tamara. If, if I can ask something, maybe, that's something that really calls my attention, I, and I guess some people will be interested. As Marta already mentioned, Ixen Project was a pioneering worldwide research project and bring more than 200 researchers from all the, over the world. What was really interesting about the XM project that uh, researchers work in committed and collaborative manner, and they also uh, work on voluntary basis. What we can actually learn from projects like XM in this in these terms? I don't know if it's from Marte. Yes, or maybe just I mean, of course, uh, this was like a, a miracle. I don't know if you see, do you, if you see that. But, uh, Usually you have, uh, you know, a project with uh, money and uh, I mean, uh, and as you said, this is based, was based on voluntary basis. So I don't know, I think it gave to this community a very specific feeling of commitment. Uh, I don't know if uh, Fernanda or Luis could, could share uh, this feeling. You know, it's so unusual in scientific, you know, dynamic. Uh, to, yes, to be involved in a research project without being paid. Of course, we were paid by our university. Huh? I mean, otherwise it was just impossible. Huh? But uh, this gives you a specific commitment to the project. I think if you were embarked in this project because it was making sense for you. Otherwise, uh, it was no motivation to be part of it. Uh, so, uh, uh, and so, yes, I don't know if you, you want to add something, uh, Fernando, Fernanda or Luis, or Sophie also, uh, who is behind the screen. Sure, I, I share the same feeling. Uh, it was impressive to have all these uh, participants in a project without um, money involved. And this 
commitment to be a um, professor, researcher uh, in the university, and that is enough <laughs> to, to, and feel that it's a privilege to be able to participate. Uh, so I feel the same. Uh, however, in my experience is that at, at the moment I was, it, I didn't have the resources to do the field work that I would like to do. That was something that was very, uh, it, it was a pity. I would like to, to, to have the resources to do, to implement the questionnaire in much, in a wide sense, in all the territory. So um, I, since, since, uh, since then, I have this, this, the, I have this feeling that it is it's still pending to do that. So I am I'm 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 looking forward to have the opportunity to go back and do the um, a more wide wide uh, field work. Can I say something? Go ahead, Lina, please. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much to all of you for, for these very interesting kind of short presentation of some of your chapters and, and the book, as well as, as the Ixum model and models. I just have one question, which is also for you know, myself and you know, the other Ixum book, and that is, can you, can you reflect a little bit from your perspective, your national, cultural, you know, financial, historic um, uh, departure or point of, of, of access? What is the use of models and definitions? You know, because Exim is very much about identifying, you know, carving out both what, what has been and what could become, which I think we have all, you know, provided national chapters. But it is interesting for us from different national and, and parts of the world to think about what is the use of you know, models and conceptual differences. And I just invite you to comment a little bit on that. This is a very good question, uh, Linda. <laughs> uh, um, yes. I would be happy to listen to the uh, reaction of uh, yeah. uh, Luis and Fernanda from Latin America, yeah. of course. I don't know, do you want to start, Luis? Yes, I can say uh, yeah. a few words. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, many of my research projects regarded the question of types, models, typologies, yeah. and so on. Uh, and uh, in the, the same time in which we are working the XM project, I was working in a national project regarding the Brazilian models of social, uh, of economic, uh, social economy or solidarity economy models. Yeah. So it, it was uh, uh, somehow a coincidence, uh, but coincidence you can explain then. So, uh, the XM project uh, help, helped us, myself and my research team, to, to think more about the, the way you can uh, propose models, compare, et cetera, et cetera. But it's like uh, a second, uh, a second uh, phase of uh, research progress when we enter a new subject. We have uh, been interested by the solidarity economy in Brazil in the 90s. So the first problem was to, to grasp from the empirical level uh, what was going on and try to make a theory or propose concepts uh, able to explain uh, that uh, those dynamics, those, those uh, dynamics. Second, uh, secondly, the question was, 
which kind, which types with models of social and solidarity enterprise uh, we can uh, visualize and uh, understand in the Brazilian context. Mm -hmm. So it's a long history, Linda, for mm -hmm. me at least. Yes, no, right. All right, I have, I would like also to share some thoughts. I think Linda, that is a very good question. And I have been thinking about it. <laughs> and I find that in Latin America, mm -hmm. Actually, we don't. We have a very low recognition of these different types of economic yeah. organizations, mm -hmm. and because of that, we have a national institutional frameworks that is not adapted to these yeah. different forms and activities and practices, mm -hmm. and. We don't have public sufficient public policies to improve their performance. And that is a very huge problem for them. Yeah. Yeah. They can't be themselves, <laughs> beginning mm -hmm. with that. Uh, in the case of Bolivia, they, they are not rec legally recognized as they are. They must yeah. be... Um, uh, they, 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 they don't have the legal recognition. They, have, they don't have the ID, the identity, beginning with that. So, uh, and we have this, um, this informal economy approach that is very <laughs> hegemonic. And this, this approach uh, is, uh, we have this supposition that the problem is size, not different ways of organizing, of governance, of how we do things, what we want to do, what we want to mm -hmm. to, to the, the labor relations. So I think that this is a, a, a necessary mm -hmm. step for transforming the institutional framework, transforming mm. institutional and political context uh, in, in any region and uh, mm. specifically in Latin America. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe if I can add uh, a comment, I would say that before it was a little bit, you know, the search for the definition for social enterprise or the best model. Mm. And we decided that it was maybe a good idea to leave this normative question aside for a moment. Mm. Not saying that we can qualify each model, its weaknesses, its strengths, all those models are not the same and mm. don't have the same place in the society. But to open the box saying, okay, let's have a very loose approach, but that we need to have information regarding the social dimension, the economic mm. dimension and the mm -hmm. governance. Mm -hmm. Because the question of governance and democracy is important for social enterprise. Was a way to a little bit open the box without a normative position mm -hmm. and see, ha, huh, it's not enough to struggle against diversity of plenty of definition of plenty of type of you know organization we have the intuition that yes there are some type of models and not only one model by country but even in the same country and so i see at least in belgium to put these different models on the table is a way to open the debate and to link different person with different backgrounds. Not saying that every, everything is the same. Of course, the social business models is not the same as the cooperative model. But look what we call, and we don't speak about social business in Belgium so much, but what we could be qualified as social business, huh, these are very small enterprises. They are not, you know, this big uh, uh, organization, uh, you know, this is a, a not the picture coming from the field. 
And so it was a way to, you know, to, 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 yes, to open the discussion with people with different backgrounds and also changing a little bit the image or the discourse we could have in this field. Okay, we could go on to discuss this because as more time uh, we had, we would go deeper into the kind of uh, discussions which are so relevant and um, and now steam from the experience of this research and this this comparative aspect, the, this possibility to, to discuss between different continents and different realities uh, would uh, only contribute to add to, to our frameworks. Um, but we need to stop here. And I uh, thank yeah. you so much for your participation. <laughs>